Okay, we're going to do some extra practice for solving equations. Uh, looks like this starts on page 50 of your workbook. We're going to start with verifying a solution for an equation. So we're being asked, is negative 3 a solution for this equation? So if you're remembering the practices, to verify a given solution for a given equation, we substitute that solution in for x. So we're going to start with a negative sign because this negative is not attached to the x. Starting with a negative sign and then parentheses and then putting in the negative 3 for x. So you should have two negatives. Minus 5 equals 2 and then the x again which is negative 3 minus 2 and then we simplify. If it is a solution both sides should come out to be the same. So the opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. Positive 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Multiply first. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Minus 2 comes out to be negative 8. All right, these are not equal. So what does that mean? If these are not equal, that means that negative 3 is not a solution. So the answer here is no or not a solution. Because the two sides came out to be different. So let's do number 2. Same thing, we're going to verify a solution. Is negative 2 a solution for this equation? Now this is getting complicated. We do have negatives, we have exponents, and we have some absolute values over here. So we have to be really careful when we substitute that negative 2 in. Remember, this negative is different from the x. It is not part of the x. This is all of the x. So we have a negative here, and then we have x. So we've got two negatives again. The negative that's coming from here and then parentheses, and then put the x value in, which is negative 2, and then put the square on the outside. Plus 10 equals negative 3, absolute value, x is negative 2, plus 12. All right, we're going to simplify then. All right, when we look here, we have an exponent, and we have these negatives. Do not simplify these first. Exponents come first. So negative 2 times negative 2 makes positive 4. And then this negative comes down. So this becomes negative 4 plus 10 makes positive 6. On the right, this is multiply, but you have to simplify this absolute value first. The absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. So this becomes negative 3 times positive 2 plus 12. Multiply first. Multiply before add. So we end up with negative 6 plus 12 is positive 6. So we have 6 equals 6. So what does that mean? Is negative 2 a solution? Yes, it is. So you can answer this with yes or yes, it is a solution. Okay, on number 3, solve the variable, check your work. Again, I don't know if we have room to check all of our work, so I'm going to leave the check to you guys. What do we have here? Negative 7 plus x equals negative 7. All right, we're trying to isolate the x, so we're going to add 7 to both sides. Remember, when you're solving an equation, you're always focusing on the variable and undoing whatever's happening on this side of the variable. Since this is a negative 7, we undo it with positive 7. But whatever I did here to isolate the variable, I also have to do on the other side of the equation, and the equal sign is the separator. So these cancel, and I have x equals negative 7 plus 7 is 0. That's okay. 0 is a real number. x can equal 0. Just because you get 0 doesn't mean you made a mistake. How do you check it, though? How do you check it? You take the 0, and you substitute it back in for x in the original equation. So we should have negative 7 plus 0 equals negative 7. Is that a true statement? Does it make a true statement? Yes, it does. So you know you have the right solution. On number four, isolate the variable, which is b. We have a negative 3 being added to a b. How do we get rid of negative 3? We add 3. Positive 3 and negative 3 are opposites, so we get b equals 11. On number five, 
we have negative y plus 3 equals negative 15. We want to isolate this y, so we're going to subtract 3. The opposite of positive 3 is negative 3. We have negative y equals negative 18. All right, we're not done because we don't want that negative on the y. We want this to be positive y. So this is negative 1. Don't forget this has got an invisible 1 in front of it. To get rid of that, you divide by negative 1. Negative 1 divided by negative 1 makes positive 1. So this turns into positive 1y. And negative 18 divided by negative 1 turns into positive 18. So y equals 18. Okay. We've got negative 5 plus a over 4 equals 11. All right. So this is a divide. So this is not where we want to start. We want to start with the add subtract. So we're going to get rid of this negative 5 by plus 5, both sides. So we have a over 4 equals 16. This is a divide. To undo divide, we use the opposite, which is multiply. We can multiply both sides times 4. And you can imagine this as 4 over 1. Multiply both sides times 4. Of course, those 4s cancel to make 1s. And you end up with 1a equals 16 times 4, which is 64. All right, on number 7, 2w plus 3 equals 10. We have a multiply and an add. We always undo the add first. So we're going to subtract 3, both sides of the equation. So 2w equals 10 minus 3 is 7. To get rid of the coefficient, this is a multiply, so the opposite is divide. Divide by the coefficient. You get w equals 7 halves. It's okay. It's reduced. It's improper, but it's reduced, and so it's fine. 7 halves is good because 2 doesn't go evenly into 7. All right, on number 8, 3 minus 6r equals 15. So here's the r. We want to get rid of this 3 first. So this is a positive 3. To get rid of it, we use a negative 3. So negative 6r equals 12. 15 minus 3 is 12. This is the coefficient. Multiply. To undo it, we divide. So we're going to divide by negative 6. Negative 6 divided by negative 6 gives us positive 1r. 12 divided by negative 6 gives us negative 2. So r equals negative 2. All right, on number 9, here's your fraction friend again. But since there's only one fraction, we don't need to do all that fancy clearing fractions. We can take care of a fraction coefficient at the end with a reciprocal. So let's get rid of this negative 4 first by doing plus 4, both sides. So 2 fifths x equals 8 plus 4 is 12. Now, this is a multiply, but to undo multiply of a fraction, we have to divide by a fraction. And I said this in the lesson that actually dividing by fractions is keep it, change it, flip it. So we actually multiply times the reciprocal. So instead of writing this out as a division, you're skipping a step to just write it out as a multiply times its reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 2 fifths is 5 halves. So if you multiply this, you can see these are all going to cancel to make 1, which is what you want. But you got to do the same thing over here. So we're going to multiply times 5 halves over here, which is going to mean that you need to write this 12 as 12 over 1. Okay, these all cross cancel to make 1s, which is what you want. So this is 1x. Over here, you can cancel the 12 and the 2. They're both divisible by 2. And you end up with 30 over 1, which is 30. So x equals 30. Number 10 is the same concept. We have this one fraction here as a coefficient, so we're not going to do clearing fractions. We'll just take care of it with a reciprocal at the end. We need to get rid of this negative 2 first by adding 2, both sides. So we have negative 3 fourths f equals negative 14 plus 2 is negative 12. 
Now, again, we're going to use the reciprocal. Um, and don't forget that when you have a negative fraction, its reciprocal is also negative. So we're going to multiply this times negative 4 thirds. Same thing on this side which means you're going to have to put that negative 12 over 1. Okay, all of these cancel, and of course a negative times a negative makes a positive, so we have positive 1f on, that, on the left. The 12 cancels with the 3, they're both divisible by 3, and you end up with negative 4 times negative 4, which is positive 16. Okay, so we're going to start with number 11. Still equation, so we need to simplify first because we've got this parentheses here. So we're going to distribute the 2 as the first step. So 2 times 3k, 6k, 2 times negative 4, negative 8. Um, there are no like terms. We have a variable term and a constant term. So now we're just ready to isolate this variable. How do we get rid of negative 8? Using positive 8 or plus 8. So we have 6k equals 10, 8 plus 2. Now to get rid of the 6, this is multiply. We're going to use divide. So we have k equals. All right, this is not going to divide to be a whole number, so we're just going to make sure we reduce it. They're both divisible by 2. So k equals 5 thirds. Again, more simplifying going on here. So this is a negative 1 times x, negative 1 times negative 8, and then plus the 3x, and plus the 5, and equals a 17. All right, we don't need to do anything over here on the right. This is already simplified. So we're just trying to simplify all of this first. Like terms, negative x and 3x make 2x. 8 and 5 make 13. So we have 2x plus 13 equals 17, and now we're ready to start isolating our x. Get rid of the plus 13. So negative 13 first, both sides. 2x equals 4 and then divide by the coefficient. So x equals 2. Okay, on 13, uh, 3x plus 4 is simplified equals 2x minus 5. Okay, both sides are simplified, but we have variables on both sides. So the first step is going to get these x's all together. You can either subtract 3x or you can subtract 2x. It doesn't matter. You're going to get the same answer either way. I'm going to subtract 2x. I want to put my variable on the left this side. So these are gone because 2x minus 2x makes 0, and that makes the x's disappear. Here, we're going to combine like terms. 3x minus 2x makes 1x, so I have x plus 4 equals negative 5. And now we're ready to just isolate this x. So get rid of the plus 4 by using minus 4. x equals negative 5 minus 4 is negative 9. x equals negative 9. All right. This all needs to be simplified. Got to get rid of parentheses. We'll get rid of parentheses, and then we'll combine like terms on either side. Simplify each side individually before you start undoing operations. So distributing this 2 gives us 6r plus 8 equals negative 10r minus 40 when you distribute the 5. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. 5 times negative 8 is negative 40. All right. This is simplified. We have one r term and a constant term. This is simplified. We have a variable term and a constant term. So we're good. We're simplified. Now we just need to get the variables all to the same side. You can subtract 6r, put them over here, or you can add 10r, 
and put them over here. And I think that's a better choice. Let's add 10R. Okay, that takes them off of the right. We only have a negative 40 left over here. 6R plus 10R makes 16R, and we still have plus 8. So now we have all the R's on the same side. We just need to isolate them. So get rid of this plus 8. I subtract. That leaves us with 16R equals negative 48. Negative 40 minus 8. And you're at the last step. To get rid of this coefficient, we're going to divide. So divide by 16. And we end up with R equals negative 3. 48 divided by 16 is 3. And you have a negative divided by a positive to make this a negative 3. All right, let's look at 15. Okay, in 15 we have two fractions. So this is where we are going to use clearing fractions like we talked about in the lesson because there are two fractions. So the first step to clearing fractions is to identify the least common denominator of those fractions. We're not going to change denominators, but we're going to use the least common denominator. Uh, the least common denominator of 5 and 2 is 10. So we're going to multiply the entire equation by 10. And this is going to be distributive property, guys. We're going to write it all out because it's hard to do fractions like this in your head, but we're just distributing that 10. So it's going to be 10 over 1 times 2 fifths x minus 10 over 1 times 4. And again, I don't want you to be confused. This negative that's here in front of this 4 got transferred right here in front of the entire term. So I didn't need it here too. It, they just got split, and that's perfectly fine to do. Okay, we have the equal sign, 10 over 1 times 1 half. So 10 times every term, and you can see the 2 fifths x is here, the negative 4 is here, of course the negative's over there, and the 1 half is here, and each term is getting multiplied by 10. So use 10 over 1, not 10 over 10, because 10 over 10 isn't 10, 10 over 10 is 1. So use 10 over 1, multiply it times every term, and then you can cross cancel. The 10 cancels with the 5 because they're both divisible by 5. No canceling here because this is a whole number. We actually don't need to use 10 over 1 here, do we? The 10 cancels with the 2 here to make 5. Okay, once you have 1 in all the denominators, of course, this is a 1 here. This is 4 over 1. Once you have 1 in all the denominators, you're good. And you only need to multiply across the top. Don't lose your x there. Multiply across the top. So we have 2 times 2 times x, which makes 4x, minus 10 times 4 makes 40, equals 5 times 1 which is 5. And this is so much easier to solve. Now you're ready to add the 40. So we have 4x equals 45. And then the last step, divide by the coefficient, which is 4. x equals 45 over 4. Uh, this doesn't reduce. It's already reduced. So you don't need to do anything to it. This is perfectly fine to leave your answers as improper fractions. And most of the time in algebra, we like our answers that way, so I would not change it to a mixed number. x equals 45 over 4. All right, let's go to number 16. Where is it? <laughs> there it is. Okay, so we're doing the same thing again. More fractions. Yay. I'm sure you're all clapping right now for these fractions. We're going to clear these fractions. The first thing is to identify the least common denominator. So the least common denominator of 2 and 3 is 6. So we're going to multiply the entire equation by 6. And it's just distribute. So 
we're going to have 6 times negative 2. That's the first term, negative 2. And then, again, there's this minus sign. I'm going to transfer down here. And it's going to be 6 over 1 times 1 half f. That's the second term. That's this term right here, times 6. Then we have an equal sign. We're going to have 6 over 1 times 1 third f. So every term times 6, and then you're going to cross cancel. No canceling with whole numbers, but this cancels. The 2 cancels with the 6 to make 3, and the 3 cancels with the 6 to make 2. And once you have all the denominators turned to 1, of course, these are whole numbers, so the denominator is 1 here. Once all these denominators are 1, you just need to multiply across the top. So we're going to have 6 times negative 2 minus 3 times 1 times f from here, which is 3f, equals 2 times 1 times f, which is 2f. And now we're ready to solve. Okay, it looks like we have f's on both sides, and it doesn't make sense to subtract this 2f because there's nothing else over here. So we want to bring this 3f over here to join. So this is a negative 3f. To get rid of it, add 3f. Some of you learned that in high school that when you bring something to the other side of the equation, it just changes signs, and that's fine, as long as you don't mix that up with the multiply and divide rules. So negative 12 equals 5f. Last step, divide by this coefficient. We end up with 1f equals negative 12 over 5. And again, it's improper, but it's reduced, so it's okay to leave it like that. All right, let's look at 17. We need to do a little bit of simplifying here before we can solve. So we have x plus 4 equals, all right, negative 1 times x, negative 1 times 2, so negative x minus 2. We're going to put all the x's to the same side. So we have x's on both sides. So I'm going to add x to both sides. And that makes it cancel here on the right. We're just left with negative 2. x plus x is 2x plus 4. Subtract 4. To isolate that x, 2x equals negative 6, and then divide by the coefficient. And this time, this does uh, reduce. So we end up with x equals negative 3, negative 6 divided by 2. Whoa, on number 18, it looks like we have a lot of simplifying to do here give ourselves some room. All right, this 2 needs to be distributed, but not to this 6 because it's not in the parentheses, and this 5 will need to be distributed. All right, so we're going to start with distribute. 2 times 3r, 2 times 1. We have a plus 6 on the end. We have the equal sign. 5 times negative 2r, and then 5 times negative 8. All right, so let's look for like terms. Oh, there are some like terms here. So we actually have 6r plus 8, 2 plus 6. There are no like terms over here. This is already simplified. So this is our simplified equation. Now we're ready to put all the r's to the same side. You can subtract 6r or you can add 10r. I'm going to do add 10r. You get the same answer either way. So if you worked it a different way, you can your steps will look different. But at the bottom, you should have the same solution as me if you worked everything correctly. So we have 16r plus 8 equals negative 40. We're going to subtract 8. So 16r equals negative 48. And then we're going to divide by the coefficient of 16. So r equals, this makes negative 3. 
r equals negative 3. All right, we're going to go to number 19. There's our fraction, friends. All right, in this case, because we have three fractions in this equation, we're going to clear fractions again. So we need the least common denominator of 9, 6, and 3. The smallest number that 9, 6, and 3 go into is 18. So we're going to multiply the entire equation by 18. We're going to use 18 over 1 because they're fractions. So when we write that out, it looks like this. 18 over 1 times the first term, negative 2 ninths, equals 18 over 1 times 5 6 x minus 18 over 1 times 1 third. And again, not to be confused, this negative right here in front of the 1 third got transferred here in the front of the whole term, so we don't need it here again. Okay, this negative in front of the 2 ninths could go here or it could go here, it doesn't matter, but you only need it in one place. All right, now we're going to cross cancel. So 9 cancels with 18 to make 2, 6 cancels with 18 to make 3, and 3 cancels with 18 to make 6. And you know you did it all right when the bottoms are all 1. So now we just multiply across the tops. So what do we have? 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 3 times 5 times x is 15x. 6 times 1. We have a negative sign here, so don't lose it. And this is much easier to solve. All right, we have only the x term over here, so we're ready to isolate by adding 6. Negative 4 plus 6 makes 2. And these cancel. So 2 equals 15x. And then divide the coefficient 15 off the x. So x equals 2 over 15. All right, one more clear fractions. This is the same concept. We're looking at the denominators, 2, 3, and 4. The least common multiple or the least common denominator of 2, 3, and 4 is 12. So we're going to multiply the entire equation by 12. And we're going to use distributive property, but I'm writing it all out. So 12 over 1 times 1 half b plus 12 over 1 times 13 over 3 equals 12 over 1 times negative 3 fourths b plus 12 times 2b. And I didn't use the 12 over 1 with the 2b because the 2b is not a fraction. So I don't need the 12 in fraction form. All right. Now we're going to clear. Uh, we're going to cross cancel. The 12 cancels with the 2 to make 6. The 12 cancels with the 3 to make 4. The 12 cancels with the 4 to make 3. And no canceling with these whole numbers. And you know you're on the right track because all the bottoms change to 1. And of course, because these are whole numbers, the bottoms are 1. We just don't usually show it. Now you just need to multiply across the top, but don't lose your variables wherever they are. There's one here, and there's one here. So 6 times 1 times b is 6b, plus 4 times 13 is 52 equals 3, okay, there's a negative sign here, times negative 3 times b, negative 9b, plus 12 times 2b is 24b. All right, now it looks like the left side, 6b plus 52 is good, but the right side is like terms. They both have b, so we're going to go ahead and simplify that next. So we have 6b plus 52 
equals uh, 24 and negative 9 makes 15 B. Now we want to put all the B's to the same side. And again, it doesn't make sense to subtract 15 because we have nothing else here. So we're going to bring the 6 over here to join the 15 by subtracting 6B. And that leaves us with 52 equals 7, not 7, rats. 15 minus 6 9B. And it's not a negative 9. All right, what do we do next? We just need to get rid of this 9. So divide by the coefficient. Now, we have this fraction here, 52 over 9. What we need to do is analyze, can it be reduced? Are there any common factors? Well, I know 9 doesn't go into 52. The only other factor of 9 is 3. 3 also does not go into 52, so it doesn't look like it's going to reduce. So it looks like my solution is B equals 52 over 9. There we go. Great job.